How's it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with Friday Questions and Answers, episode 41. I'm actually having to do this on Thursday because I'm going to be in Auburn tomorrow. Uh, we're leaving for Auburn at like 9.30 in the morning, and I guess I'm going to have to record this now and have this scheduled upload around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock my time, which is Central Time. So I'm excited, guys. I'm excited. We're heading up in the morning. It's gonna be fun. I'm staying with my friend who goes to Auburn, so it's gonna it's gonna be a good time. And I'm actually gonna be at game day. And I wanna ooh, I wanna tell you something real quick. Uh, let me, let me uh, mute my computer. I'm thinking about doing a game day sign, a college game day sign. It says, because kind of similar to the Wade Boggs one. Did you know that Tom Brady has an indoor pet camel? That is going to be my sign. I know if you see that on game day, that that's me. That's me. So uh, today is Thursday, so I do want to say Happy Thanksgiving. And I know you're watching this on Friday, so I hope you had a Happy Thanksgiving. I did. Um, my sleeping schedule has been a lot. It has been really off <laughs> uh, because a couple nights ago I stayed up all night trying to get all my work done for, for school for the week uh, because I have a lot of stuff to do, <laughs> as always, even over Thanksgiving break. I got all of it done in one night except I have a paper to write. That's the one thing I have left to do that I haven't even started yet, so that sucks. So I'll have to get that done somehow. But I got most of it done. But I still have to say because I've been sleeping all day pretty much except when we went Nate. <laughs> but uh, it'll be back on track hopefully because I have a week left for you out for Christmas. But let's get going. I do want to – my first question, somebody asked me on Twitter because they do not have a Facebook page. I mean Facebook as well, a YouTube account, so he couldn't comment. So he wanted to – Wanted me to answer it uh, really bad, so he tweeted at me. Um, and here we go. It was Brandon Coran. Choran, sorry. Choran says, uh, I don't have a YouTube account, but for your questions and answers vid, if Auburn beats Bama, Missouri, if Auburn beats Bama and Missouri, Mississippi State loses, oh, wow, Michigan State loses to Minnesota, do you think they jump LSU and make the title? Um, hmm. They that that could be that's interesting. That I, I haven't thought about Michigan State losing to Minnesota, which it's a possibility that is because uh, Michigan State's offense come out any week and and throw up a dud. They have a great defense, so if that did happen, Minnesota would have to get lucky with a, a touchdown, maybe a couple field goals, and win that game like ten to seven or something. But if that did happen, it very well could could uh, it could happen because Auburn would be two straight top five teams, including the number one team in the country, the reigning two time national champion. So I'm sure they'd get a lot of votes, and Ohio State schedule would take a hit because that's their big this this game they're playing in the championship game in the Big Ten is going to be their biggest game of the season, uh, especially rankings wise. So if they if they lose and Michigan State drops out of the top fifteen, top twenty, that could really hurt the standings because their biggest win would be over. Uh, Probably over Wisconsin, which is a pretty solid team, but you gotta. I, I really think you need to have more than one top 15 victory to uh, be considered for the national championship. So if that did happen, I think I think it would be split. I think it would be half and half, and I think uh, it'd be some controversy and come down to the very last vote because that would be a tough one. So to answer your question, I probably would say I'd probably say no. I would let them jump Ohio State if I was if I had a vote. But I wouldn't think people would uh, would do that pretty much just because Ohio State hasn't lost a game in the last two years. So I think that would be the case. But I would definitely vote in favor of that. Um, Jackson Bear one says, You posted your last questions to answer video on the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. What are your thoughts on such a tragic day in U.S. history? Um, Yes, it was a sad day. I mean, I think he was um, I mean, a great man. Uh, a, a great president, and it, I mean, anytime something like that happens, it's 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 great to have a day in his remembrance, and I'm glad that 50 years strong, this day has become such a big day in the United States history. So, oh, uh, he'll never be forgotten, and rightfully so, because he was a great man, great president, and um, yeah, he had some had some uh, affair issues, but everybody has has a bad part to him, but that's. Still think he was a great man and a pretty good president. Darth Aaron asks, "Why don't you ever come to your eight o'clock class, RBT? Because it's stupid. Because it's stupid. And I, I haven't gone in two weeks, two and a half weeks. Because I'm stupid. <laughs> because my alarm. I, I wake up about five, and then I keep setting my alarm for about five more minutes, and I end up 
not hearing it one time, or it not go off, and I oversleep, and no point in rushing myself. I haven't gone to it in two weeks, two and a half weeks, and I still have 98. It's the easiest class in the world, so I'm probably not going to go to our final day, honestly. Cormac Shuiti ask, why can't the Braves win in the playoffs anymore? And if you were an Auburn fan, would you have left on 4th and 23? Uh, answer that question, no. I don't think I would have, but that doesn't matter because I've never been, <laughs> I've never been an Auburn fan. Um, and why can't the Braves win the playoffs? I think it's, I think this year it was kind of because the offense was so inconsistent and they pretty much relied on the home run ball. But I think a big thing is they need to have they really, I mean, they have some solid pitching in the rotation, but they really don't have that one-two uh, duo in the top of the rotation that most most teams have that are pretty much deadly and get, guarantee you wins, or at least guarantee you a chance to win. I mean, they have solid pitching, but not that one ace or one or two aces, which are uh, top-notch pitchers. And I think that's what they need to really compete because if you look at the World Series winners past couple seasons, the one-two punches that they have. Are very very good, so I mean it's becoming more and more obvious to be a, able to go deep in the playoffs. Offense isn't as big as a problem as of the top front of the rotation, so that's something I think they need to address. Even though they have maybe one of the guys they have now where Murd is at, but as of last season, I don't think they had those two guys. Um, JD Sports says, "Can I send you some of my highlight film? Sure, and I'll definitely uh, check that out. I'd love to see uh, some of my subscribers' highlight film. That'd be cool." Jackson Bear one also asks, who do you think is the greatest Alabama quarterback ever? Ken Stabler, Joe Namath, Adrian McCarron, and Greg McElroy. Um, when you always you're looking back on a on a uh, on a statement such as this or or something like this, you you people sometimes hesitate to to pick somebody most that has been the most recent because they think you're just jumping the gun there. They're the most uh, recent on your mind you're going to pick them obviously and i think that'd be the case with a lot of people they just automatically assume no way no way agent mccarran's the, the best quarterback in alabama history but look what he's done nobody has come came close to winning three straight national championships which he i mean he might i don't want to jump the gun but i'm just saying uh at least he's won two at two national championships in a row he's been on uh three possibly four national championship teams so i mean that's a pretty gosh dang good accomplishment i mean look what he's done he's broke a ton of records He's he's played great, gave a chance to win in every single game he's played, and uh, he's been an absolute great quarterback. And um, I really think as of right now, even if he doesn't win the next ch national championship, he really could go down as the best quarterback in Alabama history. And if he wins the third one, uh, by far, and I think right now it could be by far too, but I would say, I would, I would really say A.J. McCarron. And that's a tough statement, but um, I really do think so. And that's nothing like that's not concerning about the pros, what they did in the NFL, because we don't know what AJ's gonna do. He might never start a game. I think he will, but I'm just I'm just saying, uh, just strictly basing on how he performed in college, I think AJ McCarron will go down as the best quarterback in Alabama history, as of right now. Maybe somebody will, maybe a freshman will start next year and and win four straight national championships. You never know. Um, a good question from X Auburn. He says Alabama will win that. Alabama will win the Iron Bowl if they can control the pass rush of Auburn and give Adrian McCarron time to throw. Auburn will win the Iron Bowl if they start off um, uh, with a bunch of big plays, thriving from the momentum of the stadium, the energy, uh, get a couple big touchdowns early, and if Nick Marshall can throw the football consistently um, and not turn the ball over. All right, uh, next question. I think that was it. Okay. DJ Hayes says Eastern Washington beats Oregon State, North Dakota State beats Kansas State, Georgia Southern beats Florida. Well, RBT is that why they play the game? Yes, it is. That I love that you bring this question up because I hate the fact uh, or the people people's opinion when they go and say when they're going to back going back and talking about team schedules. Oh, oh, who they beat? They beat a nobody team. They beat that's a high school team. It does not matter. Okay, first of all, you sound ignorant saying that because they're not a high school team. They're individuals from a high school who got a scholarship to play football. Who in high school they had to be like the best of the best to get a scholarship anywhere. You go to a team like Alabama or somewhere. I mean, obviously it's like the best of the best of the best to be like to get a scholarship even to an FCS team and some to even Division two teams. You have to be like the best player 
on your team, uh, maybe one of the best players in your county. So even FCS teams are filled with players who were amazing in high school. Each one has unlimited potential. I mean, that's how, that's how athletes are. They can change any day. Anybody can be great no matter what you put. It depends on what you put into it. That's what you go out of it. So these people on FCS teams, they they can be great if they want to be, and they have the potential to do so. So when you go and say they played a nobody team, that's just kind of stupid because anybody can come out and win on any given day. Alabama could have came out last week, and Chattanooga could have beat them. I mean, you got that's why you played the game. I love that you bring that up because that's why I'm not pretty much in the grand scheme of things. I think Ohio State. When I'm looking at Ohio State, it's not the fact that I really hate Ohio State and uh, and stuff like that. But um, I really never really put emphasis as much emphasis on on uh, strength of schedule because of that fact. I mean, it, yeah, it is an important factor. I mean, obviously. A, a win against number five team in the country better than a win against Ohio, but but uh, I mean you can't you can't just discount teams because they're a Georgia Southern or a North Dakota State. I mean you got to come out ready to play every single week because I mean anybody if you field eleven people on that field you have a chance to lose. So yes, that's why you play the game. DJ Hay DJ Hay says, did you know that? UT wore their smoky gray uniforms against Vandy for the second time in the, of the season and lost. The first time was against Georgia. No, I did not know that. But actually, I really do like those smoky gray uniforms. They look pretty cool to me, at least. But uh, at least they got the win against Georgia. Um, or did they? No. Wow. Tennessee lost to Georgia. That was on that crazy. That was a crazy game. UT beat. They beat South Carolina. My bad. I had a brain fart. But um. Yeah, maybe they need to retire them. They don't want to lose. They If they lose, they, it's, third time's a charm, and if they lose on that third time with the smoky gray uniform thing, they need to uh, retire those. <laughs> um, did you watch, the same guy, did you watch Vince Young's 99-yard walk-off homer against the Cardinals? Yes, I did. That was an amazing game. Uh, that, was, that was a great game. I remember that. That was uh, one of the reasons. I always, always was a big fan of Vince Young. I wish we would have never let him go because I think he has unlimited potential given the right situation, the right experience. I think he can be a great quarterback. Yes, he didn't look great all the time. He was inconsistent, but he had games of greatness, moments of greatness, and that was one of them. And if you give him experience, that could have came out of him every single game. He's a great athlete, and I don't understand why they let him go so quick. Uh, Cody Dodd says, Do you ever see yourself getting a PlayStation 4? Probably not. Probably not. And where do you see yourself after college? Hopefully, man, I really don't know. Um, that's something that, that haunts me every day of my life because I don't know. I mean, I have a sense of what I want to do, but then I don't. Because, yes, I'm going into broadcast journalism. Right? I want to either cover a sports team. I want to broadcast for a team. Something in that field, report. But, I mean, that's a that's a, that's a risky field. And, and if, I, if I ideally... Um, and also, something that I always thought about would be awesome is somehow getting into, like, if I can get the right connection, somehow later on get into, like, front office type deals with baseball teams or, or scouting with football teams. My uncle, who's a huge football guy, knows a bunch of scouts in the NFL. Maybe I could get hooked up there later on. But if I had to say right after college, I would ideally be writing for – Either a paper, reporting for a paper, covering a team, something, working in an athletic department, something like that. The guy who's a senior who's doing exactly what I'm doing, he's planning on working for South Alabama's athletic department. So, I mean, I would I would do that. Uh, definitely. C C H Extreme 96 says, what do you think of the Patriots win over Denver? Do you think this solidifies Tom Brady's legacy as the most clutch QB in NFL history? Go pass. Um, it was, I mean, obviously, it's a great win. I mean, coming back with the team that he has, I mean, it, Pat, Patriots are a solid team, obviously. Uh, but you can't you can't deny the fact they don't have the threats they've had in the past couple seasons. And, I mean, all the injuries in the defense, it was tough to come back. They they, they were clutch. They they didn't give up. They were resilient, came back from 24 nothing depths that come back and wins. They find a way to win. That's all that matters in it was a great win, and uh, Denver's one of the best teams in the NFL, and to be able to come back 24-zip from that against one of the best teams in the NFL, if not the best team, that's a 
great, great win for the Patriots. And uh, to the second question, I mean, maybe, maybe so. I mean, he's a great quarterback, obviously one of the best in the NFL in, in history. So uh, I'm not sure if I could call the most clutch quarterback just yet, but he, he's right up there. He's an absolutely great quarterback, and I would love to have him starting for my Tennessee Titans. And uh, that brings up another question that I'll be asking or answer the last the last part of the uh, the video. Someone like, just knocked on my door and just kind of screwed up my, my uh, thought process. But the last question has something to do with that. Okay, next we have DJ Hayes says, The best thing you've ever eaten while tailgating. Um... I remember at the Senior Bowl one year, we had, uh, what did we have? Some man that, that my friend knows, he was tailgating, and it was some kind of ribs, and it was the best ribs I've ever had in my life. And uh, he also had hamburgers with him, and it was the best hamburger I've ever had in my life. So uh, hopefully next time we go to Senior Bowl, I can get hooked up again, because that was some awesome food. But honestly, we like when we go to Alabama games and stuff like that, we, I mean, we don't ever really tailgate, because, uh, we don't really know anybody that's set up there. Uh, we don't tailgate ourselves. Like, we don't bring their stuff. So, I mean, if we know somebody that's tailgating, heck yeah, we'll go. But I've actually only tailgated, like, eating food and such a handful of times. Alright, JH279669 says, Why are the Redskins so bad this year? And do you think conference realignment is over? I've heard rumors that such schools... Schools such as BYU and Cincinnati are doing potential things to their athletic programs to move into different conferences. The Redskins are bad this season because RG3 really, I don't think, was ever 100% healthy. And, I mean, given a guy a guy coming back after almost a year of, of, reco of recovering and expect him to jump right back into the full speed action uh, 100%, playing just like he did last year, that was kind of impossible and too much to ask of him. So I, don't, I still don't think he's 100%, and I think he just got off to a bad start and kind of uh, screwed the season and kind of uh, put it out of whack. And also can't, can't uh, deny the fact their defense needs a lot of work. It's not a solid defense, so they definitely need to look at that defense. Because when you think about it, outside of Alfred Morris and, and RG3, there's not too much on this team that you can uh, you can say is playoff caliber. Because, I mean, RG3 is a heck of a player. You saw him last season. Him and Alfred Morris pretty much did it themselves. But they, if they want to be a consistent contender year in and year out, they got they got to add some pieces and add some pieces quick. Because you see how bad it can get when RG3 is not playing his best football. And do I think conference realignment is over? Unfortunately, no. Because I, I, I hate conference realignment. I think it's not necessarily ruined college, but college football, which but has uh kind of hampered it to a point. I think it's I think it needs to end when every team. When every conference has a conference championship game, I think it's not fair to have some conferences with championship games, others not, because that really provides an edge, especially in the polls or now in the, the selection committees. With that extra game against a really good opponent, so that's, that really hurts conferences such as the Big 12. And um, I think at, uh, as of next year, the year after, they're going to be the only conference. If they don't, if they don't realign as some teams, they could be the only conference. That does not have a in the AQ status when well now AQ status obviously then it won't be but uh, the only AQ team that oh, AQ conference that doesn't have a championship game um, the AAC actually I think in a couple of years will have enough teams for a championship game they were supposed to have enough this season but that got thrown out the water on Boise State and San Diego State they backed out but I don't like conference realignment especially what the Big Ten is doing. Because it seems like the Big Ten is trying to move to 16 teams, and I think that that just sets up for even more conference realignment because all these other conferences are going to try to make up for that, try to get 16 themselves, and that's when the so-called Super uh, Power 16 conferences will come to light, and that'll pretty much ruin college football outside of all those conferences because it'll be pretty much pointless, point, pointless uh, in playing football in the grand scheme of things if you're not in one of those conferences, which I don't think is. Which is smart at all because that that's ruining college football right there. College football is all about giving everybody an opportunity to be good and to be successful. And when that happens, that's not going to be the case because, I mean, it's the, that's the, the argument there is obvious. But um, if I 
other than the Big Ten being stupid and adding adding in uh watered down teams into that conference, <laughs> I think the conference that could realign next is probably the Big Twelve because that's kind of that's understandable because they have ten teams right now they will not have a conference championship, and I think they've at, tried adding in B, adding in BYU before, but it's just way too complicated with everything they have to do. Such as, I think they, they, they will not play in Sunday games. I don't know why that's a factor, but it's th things like that, um, uh, complicated things with BYU, they won't add them in, or they haven't came to an agreement just yet. They could always, it could always happen in the future, but as, that, as of right now, that's the case. Cincinnati, I could see it. I could see Cincinnati moving into the Big 12. I mean, it makes sense. Um, uh, if you want to say ge geographical, Maybe not the best sense, but I mean, there's not too too uh, many other teams you could add in, and they probably, I mean, if they wanted to, they could raid some teams from the AAC because that that conference is always up for uh, for raiding if one of those teams emerged, and maybe they could pull somebody out of the a ACC uh, because I mean, I think the Big 12 is a step up from the ACC, so I think the Big 12 eventually will. will Pull a couple schools out of the Big 12. I mean, out of the ACC and AAC. And also, I've heard some talk about Arkansas wanting to leave the Big 12. Don't know why. And um, that's where that used to be, if I'm not mistaken. And then I also heard Miami is another possible destination. So uh, that's just rumors. So. so next, Carson Jacobs. Do you think Auburn can beat Alabama? I mean, obviously they can, but will it happen? I hope not. I don't think so. But, it, I mean, obviously, yes, it can happen. And here's the question I was talking about before. Daniel Perry, and this is a really complicated question. It's kind of splitting hairs here. Would you rather have – well, not a complication, complicated question, but it's a complicated answer. Uh, would you rather have Tom Brady or Manning starting on your team? I'm assuming he's asking about Peyton Manning. Oh, man, that's so tough. I mean, Peyton Manning, obviously the most intelligent quarterback, I think. Tom Brady, obviously – has the most uh, to show for. Um, there's a two great quarterbacks. I'd love to have either of uh, either of them on my team. I mean, if he ended up Peyton Manning ended up going to the Titans, which he was rumored to do so after he left the Colts. Um, it seems as if uh, I think uh, the Titans would have been will be a playoff contender year in and year out. So I loved had him had him start with the Titans. But I mean, as much as criticism Tom Brady gets. From from his uh from his so-called haters, I think he's a great quarterback. I think he I think Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, both I believe top five in NFL history. Um, absolute great quarterbacks. And if I had to pick one, man, that's, that's so tough. Uh, they're both great quarterbacks. But I think I think if you're looking at a at a if you need more help, I think um. Intelligence wise, like if you have a team with not a lot of talent, I think I would go with Peyton Manning. That's kind of tough to say because of right now the situation is going. Both players are being successful, and Tom Brady obviously has the less amount of talent, but Peyton Manning has the more talent, and Tom Brady just beat him. But I, I, I really think Peyton Manning fits more of being a quarterback that has, has a, uh, I don't know, that man. I just see Peyton Manning being a guy that that's better at at working around not having talent, even though he's had talent in the past. I mean, obviously Reggie Wayne, etc. Uh, but I, I feel him as being that guy. But Tom Brady, he's been the guy to. I mean, obviously he has Super Bowl rings. I mean, he's always been successful. Uh, never really had. A, he's never had a bad season. He's always played great. So um, I think. If I had to pick one or two, I think I'd base it off of who's been more successful in the grand scheme of things, and I think I'll go with Tom Brady, but that's a tough question. That's a real tough question, but that's it, guys. Uh, that was the last question. I need to go pack and do some other things. I need to uh, I need to go try to get some do some research on my paper, because I'm going to try to write it on the way to Auburn, some of it on the way to Auburn. I mean, obviously, I won't get all of it done. It's all the way back, which sucks. I just want to enjoy myself, but college doesn't let you do that. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section below with a question, and I'll answer it in next week's episode, and you'll be featured in it. I'll say your name and everything. You'll become famous. 
from the 80 people that view the videos. <laughs> but that's it, guys. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Have a great week. Have a great football weekend. Uh, enjoy it. This is the last full full uh, weekend uh, slate of games. And for some teams, this is the last week of the season. So that sucks. But um, enjoy it while you can. Until next time, guys. Roll tight. Go socks and go tight. Just to you. Alabama beat Auburn. And uh, that's it. See you next time, guys. Peace.